Hey guys, today we're going to talk about insulin. We're going to go beyond insulin. A lot of times uh, people have this idea that I need to lower my carb so I can lower insulin and they think about carbohydrates being the only thing that affects insulin. Um, I'm going to go beyond that. There's many different parts of this puzzle. So let's just kind of dive in. Um, so let's start with sugar. Okay, glucose. Glucose will increase insulin. Lactose, this is milk sugar, does not increase insulin as much as glucose. And sucrose, which is a combination of glucose and fructose, has a different effect on insulin. So if we have 100% fructose, that creates a different response on insulin. So you can see the different sugars have different responses. Out of all of these right here, this one right here, is the most dangerous. So the difference between fructose and other sugars is very, very different. Uh, fructose is mainly handled by your liver. These other sugars could be handled by different cells throughout the body and organs, but fructose is mainly handled by the liver. So when you consume food high in fructose or high fructose corn syrup, or even worse, agave nectar, you're gonna overload the liver. You are gonna spike insulin indirectly but not directly. The liver is going to start to generate excessive fat as a fatty liver and adipose tissue around the organs. So we're going to have a huge problem uh, with this right here. So if you had a choice between fructose and other sugars, uh, you want to go with the other sugars and avoid fructose at all costs. Okay, now let's go to the next topic, which is basically consuming sugar in combination with protein. When you combine these two together, you increase the insulin response by 200%. So it's exaggerated. When you combine sugar with fat, you also increase the insulin response by 200%. So again, it's exaggerated. So if you're going to consume these, it's much better to consume them separately, not together. So I'm just talking about the combination of certain foods. You can combine protein and fat, and that's totally fine. But anytime you add sugar, that's when you actually create a lot of problems with insulin. And there's a lot more data on this topic um, because when you actually start combining this, you start creating a stickiness in your blood and you create all sorts of protein deposits in the brain, in the heart, in the joints. So that's a completely different topic. But all you need to know is that the combination of these two will exaggerate the spike of insulin. Let's go to other carbohydrates in addition to these sugars right here. So you have vegetable carbohydrates. Within the vegetable family, you have certain vegetables that spike insulin more than others, simply because it has more concentrated sugar. And then you have fruit, which is even has more sugar, less fiber. You have starches, grains. You have the different processing of grains. You have very refined grains versus whole grains. They have different effects on insulin. Uh, vegetables create the least response on insulin because it has the least amount of sugar and it has the most fiber. Now the thing about fiber, even now fiber is a carbohydrate, it doesn't affect insulin. So if we combine fiber with something else, it actually helps buffer the insulin response. So let me give, let me give an example. Not that you would consume orange juice, but let's say for example, you eat an orange, versus drinking the juice from an orange, which minuses the fiber, you're gonna have a much uh, greater spike of insulin with the orange juice versus the whole orange. So fiber buffers insulin response. Now, fiber also feeds the microbes in your gut, and the microbes then make a um, byproduct called butyrate, which helps blood sugars. So fiber actually helps lower insulin resistance down the road from the gut, from the microbes. Okay, so now let's talk about alcohol. There's different types of alcohol and there's different insulin response to alcohol. So now let's switch to a slightly different topic, which is the insulin index. You may have heard of the glycemic index, which is kind of the index of how fast foods turn into sugar and raise your blood sugar. Then you have something called the insulin index, which are foods that raise insulin. It doesn't really have anything to do with the blood sugars, it has only to do with the insulin. What you want to do is consume foods low on the insulin index. So the higher the number, the greater the response of insulin. Okay? So with alcohol, beer is a 20. Okay? Red wine is 15. So beer is 
greater than red wine, so beer has a higher effect on insulin. White wine is a three. So if you were to compare red wine with white wine, especially if it's dry, not sweet, you're going to create a much less insulin response if you consume white wine. Then you have gin, which has a zero effect on the insulin index. So you might think, oh, I can just consume gin, right? Unfortunately, gin is very damaging to your liver, so it's going to create all sorts of other issues, okay? So just because something might lower your insulin doesn't make it a health food, okay? So um, I recommend not even consuming any of these. Uh, maybe occasionally you want to drink some alcohol, but just realize that we're, the alcohol is what creates the damage to the liver in addition to the um, responses of insulin. Okay, now let's get to the topic of fat. Fat has the least response of insulin than anything. The more pure the fat, the lower on the in insulin index it is. Now, let's just take, for example, you go to the store and you buy tuna fish, okay, in a can. So you have tuna and water, okay? That has an insulin index response of 26. Compared to tuna in the oil, that has 16. So you can see just by adding the oil, it actually lowers the insulin response. So fat lowers the insulin in the body. Okay. And then we have, let's say, a potato chip. Okay. Now this is basically a starch, um, which I'm not recommending. I'm just giving an example. If we compare a potato chip is 15 on the insulin index. If we compare that to a reduced fat potato chip, it's 51. So the fattier the chip, the least amount of insulin. They're both pretty high, but the point is that one is better than the other. Let's take milk. Skim milk is 60 on this scale. 2% milk, which has more fat, is 20. So the fattier milk has three times less insulin response than the low-fat milk. Interesting. Okay, moving right along. I want to just mention sugar alcohols. This is not an alcohol. This is an alternative sweetener. There's certain sugar alcohols that create different effect on the glycemic index, okay? Xylitol, which is from birch bark, it's a sweetener, tastes very similar to sugar, by the way, uh, has a low response on the glycemic index, 30, but it still has a response. Rethritol has a response of zero. So I just want to make the point that Different sugar alcohols have different responses to either blood sugars or insulin. All right, last topic we're going to talk about is protein. So when you consume moderate amount of protein, it has a very small effect on insulin, but it does increase insulin a little bit, okay? But if you take uh, like meat or fish, it, it will not increase your blood sugars. But here's the thing, when you increase the volume of protein, that's when you start getting more of a spike of insulin. So a moderate amount of protein will spike insulin maybe just slightly. The more protein you go, the more insulin is raised. And here's the other interesting point about this. Low fat protein also will increase insulin more than higher fat protein. So again, the fat buffers the, the insulin response. One of the greatest uh, triggers to insulin on the insulin scale is extremely low fat lean protein, which is whey protein. Okay. So whey protein will greatly increase insulin. Now it does other things too. And I'm not saying don't consume whey protein, but the point is that this can create a spike in insulin. And if you already have a problem with blood sugars, the last thing you want to do is start creating more insulin because the more insulin that's spiked, the more insulin resistance you get. Okay, for those of you that are new, here's insulin, here's the receptor. Your body starts to develop insulin resistance. It won't let that insulin go into the uh, receptor. So then what happens, you don't get the signal back to the pancreas. So the pancreas senses a deficiency and it starts pumping out more and more insulin to the point where you're getting five to seven times more insulin than a normal person, simply because it's not connected over here. So if, if I'm ignoring you right now, and I'm not listening to you, and I'm not acknowledging what you're saying, you might start shouting at me because I'm not receiving that. It's the feedback loop. 
So the point is that if we keep raising insulin by consuming maybe too much whey, that potentially could increase your insulin resistance and create more insulin and more problems. So it's a little complex, but I wanted to cover all the different aspects of what can increase insulin, which thereby can increase insulin resistance and their different combinations. All right, thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?